Hey guys, it's Chris at Highland Guitars. You're watching another one of my YouTube guitar building videos. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I hope that by the end of this video, I'll have earned the honor of your subscription. And to everybody who's watching, uh, if you would enjoy this video, get anything out of it, I would really appreciate if you would take a millionth of a second to click that thumbs up button. It really helps to support my channel and it doesn't cost you anything to do that. So what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video is I'm gonna kind of cover the results of a study that was done many years ago on finishes that we apply to wood and how effective or ineffective they are at preventing the absorption of water vapor or humidity. Now we're not talking about water that gets spilled onto wood or being submerged into water. We're talking about water vapor because humidity, water vapor, the particles are so incredibly small, they're microscopic, and they can enter wood and penetrate rapidly and deeply into the wood. And when that happens, wood's shape can change. It can swell, it can warp, it can bend, it can twist. And then when water leaves, if the uh, climate suddenly dries out, the wood can split and crack and move in the opposite direction that it did when it was exposed to a high humidity situation. So obviously, humidity is the enemy of guitar builders and guitar players, especially when it comes to the neck, because the neck is very susceptible to absorbing humidity and then warping, twisting, bending, and, and all that terrible stuff that happens when the humidity re uh, levels increase. And, you know, it's, it's really uh, a problem with acoustic guitar players, and that's one of the reasons why they put little uh, humidifiers in their case to try to keep the humidity levels consistent. So what do luthiers typically do to prevent the absorption of humidity into the wood? We apply finish. And I personally, on my channel here, have recommended for years that you apply a finish to every square inch of the wood in order to help prevent the absorption of humidity. However, very recently, a viewer sent me a study where a great number of finishes were tested to see how effective they are at preventing the wood from absorbing humidity. And I have to say the results of this, this study were very eye-opening. What's interesting is the study was actually published in 1986. So it's not a brand new study. It's been out there for a long time. And I'm really surprised that over the years that I've been finishing guitars and researching the process, that I haven't come across this study before. And once it was sent to me, I did quite a bit more research to try to understand more about what this study was saying. And I found that it's really one of the only studies in existence that covers this subject. In fact, all the other articles that I could find on the internet that talk about applying finish to prevent the absorption of humidity quote this study. They haven't done their own studies. They, they simply refer back to the study that was done in 1986. Now, what's cool about the study is, is they tested 91 different types of finish. They didn't test them by brand name. Instead, they test them by product type. And they tested 91 different types of products. The only problem is, here in 2024, we have new products available that weren't part of that study. However, many of the products that are, that are new and available today are based on components of the products that were tested in that study. So you can kind of uh, apply what that study says to modern um, products that are uh, in existence. It'd be nice to see them do a new study where they take into account some of these new products. But um, when I looked through that list of products that were tested, I identified seven different products that we luthiers use on a regular basis to finish our guitars. They include um, solvent-based polyurethane, tongue oil, uh, 2K polyurethane, linseed oil, nitrocellulose lacquer, water-based acrylic, and good old shellac. And what they did was they took these products 
they applied it to samples of wood, and then they would test it after one day, seven days, and 14 days to see how effective they were at blocking the absorption of humidity. Now I have to assume that when they applied the product, they let it fully dry and cure for the amount of time necessary for each product. Because as you know, many of these products that we use can take significant amount of time to cure. And I would assume that would affect the product's ability to block uh, the uh, absorption of water vapor. They don't say anything about that in the study. All they say is that the product was allowed to dry. So I just have to assume that it was given the, the adequate time to cure. Um, and we know that products like nitrocellulose can take up to a month to cure. Um, your uh, 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 1K solvent-based polyurethanes can take a couple of weeks. Uh, your water-based acrylics can take three or four weeks to cure. So that's important to, um, to, to bear that in mind. Now what they did was they would apply with each product, one coat on a sample, then on another sample they would apply two coats, and then on a third sample they would apply three coats to see if the product improved with additional applications of the product. And then what they would do is they would list out the results as a percentage. So at 100%, that means the product was 100% effective at blocking the absorption of humidity. Anything lower than that means it becomes less effective. And like I said, they tested it over one day, seven days, and 14 days. Now I'm gonna give you some of these results and I'm only gonna give you the results after one day. Uh, I'll give you an example with one of the products, what it does after seven days and 14 days, just to show you that in every single product they tested, all 91 of them, the uh, effectiveness declined somewhat dramatically from one day to seven days to 14 days. So of all the products that I identified, the seven that I identified, the one that was most effective at blocking um, the absorption of humidity was 2K polyurethane. And after one day, it had an effectiveness of 95%. So that's pretty close to 100%, but it's still not 100%, it's 95%. And as an example of what happened at seven days, that level dropped to 78%. And then at 14 days, it dropped to 63%. So as you can see the passage of time, the effectiveness drops. And I would assume after a certain point, it levels off, but that could be at a very low percentage. So the next product that was tested as being effective was shellac, believe it or not. That's one of the oldest products that we've ever used for finishing guitars. And that has an effectiveness of 91%, but again, it declines with, each, with the passage of time. Then next up after that is the solvent-based polyurethane. It has a, an effectiveness of 87%. And then after that is um, nitrocellulose lacquer. And nitrocellulose lacquer has an effectiveness of 79%. So your good old trusted nitrocellulose drops fairly dramatically uh, from uh, say the 2K polyurethane. And then after nitrocellulose, we have a water-based acrylic, which was a real surprise to me. Water-based acrylic uh, has an effectiveness of 68%. Now, unfortunately, they didn't have any water-based polyurethane, which is actually the, the water-based product I prefer to use because it's more durable than the water-based acrylic. But in 1986, I don't think there were enough, or perhaps there weren't any water-based polyurethanes on the market yet. It was just the acrylics. So they tested that and it had the effectiveness of 68%. And then after that, we have the oil-based products. Tongue oil has an effectiveness of only 52%. So it's pretty, it's pretty low, it's just over half, uh, 52%. And then the last and the worst was linseed oil at only 33%. Now it's important to note, they just describe it as linseed oil, and then the tongue oil they just listed as tongue oil. 
I don't know if the linseed oil was modified like a boiled linseed oil or if it was raw linseed oil. Because if it's raw linseed oil, it can take years to fully cure and dry. So I have a feeling that if they were using a raw linseed oil, we may not be getting an accurate representation of how that product would perform. Same thing with tongue oil. If it's pure tongue oil, it could take weeks, if not months, to fully cure. However, if it's polymerized, it's pretty much cured after about 8 to 12 hours. So that could have a significant difference. Now, as you can see, these products have very limited effectiveness at blocking the absorption of moisture into wood. So what does that mean? Does that mean we're wasting our time applying these finishes to the wood? Well, no, because there are other reasons why we apply finishes. We apply them to enhance the beauty of the wood, and we also apply them to hopefully uh, improve their resistance to scuffs and scrapes and scratches and dings and dents and things like that. However, you know, some of the products like the tongue oils and the linseed oil really don't do that. Um, they kind of encourage the owner to take really good care of their guitars or to be prepared to frequently reapply the oil in order to keep the guitar looking good and occasionally sanding and all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, we certainly shouldn't stop using these products because they aren't as effective at sealing moisture as we may have thought in the beginning. But there are several other things that we need to consider. Number one, when we apply finishes, we typically aren't just applying one, two, or three coats of just one product. We're applying multiple coats of several products. We're applying sealers, grain fillers, colors, and uh, clear coats. So when you consider the number of coats of each that we apply, it can add up to 15, 20, 25, 30 coats of product that we are applying to the wood. That has to have some effect on its ability to resist the absorption of moisture. However, even in the pickup pockets or in the tuner holes, if there's exposed wood, it's going to absorb moisture. And that moisture, once it enters the wood, and we're talking again, you know, water vapor in the form of humidity, it will rapidly spread through the wood. That's just how it works because it's so, the droplets are so in, incredibly small. So um, I wouldn't, you know, suggest that you avoid or you just skip the process of applying finish because you may not think it's effective because you still want it for the appearance and the durability aspects of what it can offer. Uh, now, the stud, this study did not test some of the new products that we have available to us, like the water-based polyurethanes uh, or even the water-based 2K polyurethanes, which I imagine would be extremely effective. And perhaps the most important one that was omitted from the test, and it was because it probably wasn't available at the time, is UV-cured polyester. UV-cured polyester, I would imagine, would start out at close to 100% and would stay there because it is not porous when it dries. The other products that we use, if you look at them at a microscopic level, they are porous, and that's why the uh, vapor gets through the finish and into the wood, but not with polyester. Polyester is 100% solids, and when it dries and cures, there is no way for airborne humidity to penetrate through it and enter the wood. So that, I would think, would be the most effective. But it's not necessarily the type of product that most consumers uh, or hobby builders can apply themselves. It takes specialized equipment, specialized environment to work in. It's, it's not easy to use. Now, if you're concerned about humidity, and you should be, there are some options that you, you might want to consider. Uh, one would be to use a different type of material for making the neck of your guitars. Because really, humidity only affects the neck. It's not as big of an issue with the body. It's mostly an issue with the neck. So you could consider using a different kind of material to make the neck. And I know there are some luthiers uh, out there who are using aluminum and then others who are using carbon fiber. Unfortunately, however, for the hobbyist or the small shop luthier, 
Aluminum and carbon fiber is really out of the question due to the type of tools and equipment that you need to produce a neck from those materials. And the process that's involved is quite a bit more complicated than most of your hobbyists and small shop luthiers are willing to engage in. And um, the other problem is we like to work in wood. That's why many of us are doing this because we enjoy woodworking. So we wanna make the guitar completely out of wood. If that's the case, another option is to consider torrified wood. Now, you may never have heard of torrified wood, although I think many of you watching know exactly what I'm talking about. It's also known as roasted wood. And what it is is wood that has been kiln dried using a process that heats it up to a very high temperature to the point where the wood would normally burn. But it doesn't burn because they remove all the oxygen from the kiln. So the wood just gets really super hot. And what it does is it drives out all the moisture and then it changes the cellular structure of the wood so that once the wood is removed from the kiln and cooled down, it's not going to absorb water or moisture. You can even submerge it into a tank of water for extended periods of time and it's not gonna absorb the water. It also doesn't absorb the very fine particles uh, associated with water vapor in humidity. So it's very, very effective at resisting the absorption of moisture and therefore it remains stable. It doesn't move at all. Uh, the only downside to it is the appearance may not be um, uh, appealing to everybody. Um, the wood tends to take on kind of a darker brown color once it's gone through that roasting process. But it is essentially wood. It works like wood. You can carve it and sand it and, you know, shape it and do all the things that you normally would with wood. It just isn't going to absorb that moisture. So, you know, if you're worried about the appearance of it and you stare at the back of your necks all the time, that might be an issue. But most of us don't, so I would highly recommend considering torrified wood. I know that's what I plan to do going forward. After this next bill, when I use up my last piece of um, hard maple for the neck, I'm gonna start looking at, at the torrified woods because they are, they're, they're a little bit more expensive, but they are becoming more available and the price is coming down somewhat. And the one thing that I will encourage you to do though is to make sure that any wood that you purchase that is advertised as torrified is not only actually torrified, but torrified properly because there's a right way to do it and then there are a lot of wrong ways to do it. And if it isn't done correctly, it isn't gonna perform the way it's supposed to. So I hope that uh, you found this video to be useful and informative. And um, as always, you know, if you did, please give the, the video a thumbs up, that always helps. And I will post a link to that study in the description down below. So if you wanna check it out yourself, you can do so. And um, there's a lot more information in that study than what I've provided here. I've just given kind of a top view of, of what was covered in that study. So um, I'd be interested to know what you guys think about this subject. Are there any other studies that you're aware of about finishes and their ability to resist the absorption of water vapor and humidity? Uh, what about studies on torrified wood? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm really interested in, in scientific studies and how they impact our hobby and our pursuit of building guitars. So be sure to share those down below. And as always, uh, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, and I hope you'll be back for more guitar building adventures.